Howdy folks, I just wanted to record a, a quick video talking about random sampling because I really felt like uh, we just didn't have enough time uh, the way I wanted uh, in class last week and, and I don't want to spend a lot more time in class discussing this. So here's two quick videos uh, that, uh, that has to do with random sampling. First, we're going to look at the four random sampling techniques that we, um, we talked about in class and then a second video that's going to talk about how we can use a random digit table to pick random samples. So let's start with just a random sample. Uh, what does what does the word random mean? The word random means uh, not just that something is chaotic, but or, or something crazy like that. It means that that every every member of the population, right? Um, you can't even read that. That's terrible color. I'm going to go to something else. Every member of the population has the same. This color also is terrible. I'm going to go back to my purple. Uh, has the same chance of being uh, sampled or being selected to be part of our sample. That every single member of the population has the same chance of being uh, sampled. And that's going to be true of all of the random sampling techniques that we see. Um, the four that, that we, we, we're going to talk about, of course, is the SRS, the simple random sample, a systematic sample, and we'll just go through these real quick. Um, and then a cluster sampling and a stratified sampling. Now, uh, the idea of a, a simple random sample, we said that the, the, that the mechanism of a simple random sample is different than the actual pr uh, definition of the simple random sample. The mechanism is something that you would normally think of when you take samples of things. Um, you think of put it, pulling names out of a hat, or randomly giving or giving people numbers and randomly picking numbers. Um, so that this mechanism, right? That, that ooh, I like that color. That's nice. Um, the mechanism is a, that I'll sort of summarize is sort of the hat is not really the definition of a simple random sample. What was the definition of a simple random sample? Well, it was simply that that every single sample of the same size has the same chance of being selected. That every group of the same size. So if the, if we we use n to stand for the sample size of a population, right? Or excuse me, the sample size of our sample. Excuse me. Um, it, that that for any uh, group uh, any groups of the same size. Right, the same size n. It's like they have the same chance of being selected. So instead of just picking individuals and saying every individual has the same chance of being selected, we're saying that every group of the same size has the same chance of being selected. The same chance of being selected, right, to be in the sample. Now. Um, this is getting a little messy, not quite as neat as I like, but heck, that's the way it goes. Uh, systematic was a sampling technique that instead you know, decided that we would use some type of pattern to pick our sample. And of course, the randomness of this sampling technique doesn't come in the nature of the pattern, but it comes in who is selected first in order to employ the pattern. So usually in a systematic sampling, we have some type of ordered population where you pick individuals according to a pattern, but uh, the, the very first individual with which you use the pattern is randomly selected, um, frequently using something like, I don't know, a random number table or a random number generator. And we'll, we'll talk about that um, pretty soon. Um, so we talked about that. Let's let's move on to this cluster versus stratified. What's the distinction here? Well, these are often confused. Um, the idea here is in a cluster sampling that uh, that we have uh, and in stratified that we already have our population somehow broken up into groups, right? In the cluster sampling, we have uh, groups. Does this color work? I think it works all right. Oh, pencil's breaking. We have groups uh, that have. Uh, a, a similar variety. In other words, in some sense, oh my gosh, that they have similar variety. Can you read that? I don't even know. That that the the variety that exists in the population um, also seems to exist in our uh, sample. Uh, what I mean by that is that um, in some sense, uh, I meant to say sample, but I mean in all the individual groups. In some sense, each group of the population is itself a kind of microcosm of the whole population. Frequently, uh, these clusters, uh, oh, that is worthless. These clusters uh, arise from uh, location, 
right? Because for instance, zip codes or things like that, 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 the, that the groups of individuals that live in one zip code are often at least similar in variety to the individuals that live in other zip codes. So how the cluster sampling works is we randomly select, um, we randomly select some clusters or some groups from that population and, and sample all in the groups that we pick. Okay? So we have these, these groups that are, that are heterogeneous. In other words, they, they all have a huge amount of variety in them. And the variety that exists in them is somehow a microcosm of the whole population. We pick some of those groups and sample everyone in those groups, and that should give us a pretty decent sample. How about stratified? Once stratified, I'm going to try this orange again. On the stratified, we have groups again, but instead of having groups that uh, are similar in variety, the groups uh, are defined by some type of unique characteristic. Uh, for instance, um, males versus females. Uh, it is uh, something different. Uh, characteristic. Um, there, it's something different to be uh, male versus female, right? Um, or it's something different to be a senior in high school or a freshman in high school. Um, it's something different to be uh, retired versus working. And so there's some fundamental unique characteristic that, that already unifies and separates um, parts of the population. And so what we want to do sometimes is we want to have some from each of these groups to be part of our sample. And so this is what we, we would have in a stratified kind of sampling where we would, um, we would randomly select some uh, people from every group. Right? And so here's that idea that, uh, that in stratified, every single group is represented with some people. The difference, of course, for clustering is that only some of the groups uh, are represented, but everyone in those selected groups gets to be part of the sampling. And it's kind of intuitive once you kind of get the ideas of, of why that should work. Now let's go back to this curious definition of an SRS, right? The, the definition of an SRS said that 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 for that um, for all groups of the same size, they have the same chance of being selected, right? Is that true of these other guys? Well, think about systematic. Systematic says you use some pattern, like say you pick every third person. Is there any chance that you and the person standing next to you will be part of the same sample? Absolutely not. There's no way. While each of you have the same chance of being selected as making it random because uh, there's no way of knowing in advance whether you will fall in the pattern or not. It, because of that method, there's no way that you and the person next to you could both be part of the sample. That is a random sampling because everyone has the same chance of being selected, but it's not an SRS because you, the group of you two have no chance of getting picked. Think about cluster sampling. Say you're going to pick say, I don't know, four clusters out of a population. And let's say uh, altogether you would expect to have something like 50 people in your sample. Well, any, any five people that could come from uh, five different clusters have no chance of being in the sample together. Because if you're only going to pick four clusters and you have people that are spread out amongst five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, however many clusters exist, there's no chance that all those people will be in a sample together. Therefore, it's once again not a simple random sample, even if it is random. Same thing with stratified. Every single individual, every man or woman, has an equal chance of being picked because you're going to randomly pick some man and randomly pick some women. However, there's no way that you would have a sample that's entirely men or entirely women or entirely people that come from any particular thing. Uh, it's be Why? Of course, because you, in advance, are already defining that you're going to have a certain number from each. And therefore, that is a type of a group of a size that has no chance of being selected from that population. What do we normally do in statistics? So at least in, in our course in AP Stats, we're going to almost always presume that we're taking an SRS because the mathematics involved with dealing with systematic cluster and stratified often uh, can get a little hairy. And that's just not part of our curriculum. And so what you'll see is when we get into a lot of the, the serious mathematics of our course, one of the presumptions, one of the assumptions is that we're, we're selecting samples using a simple random sampling so that any group of the same size always has the same chance of being selected. 
All right, that's that. I think you should have it from there. Um, let's go on to talking about our random digit table as a mechanism for picking random samples. Peace and love to you always. Have